But the problem is, is that the, the media landscape is changing so rapidly. Uh, you can't keep up with it. Uh, I mean, I remember when BuzzFeed was just something I did in college around 2 a.m. <laughs> That was President Obama at last week's White House Correspondents' Dinner joking about his past pot smoking. While federal officials are still deciding what they will do, state-level officials in places like Colorado and Washington, two states that have legalized the recreational use of marijuana in 2012, continue to lead the decriminalizing charge. On Thursday, Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley signed a bill that makes Maryland the 19th state with a bill legalizing medical marijuana. So we have the kind of states as laboratories, but we also have international examples of what might work here. Yeah, my eyebrows kind of shot up when I looked at the ONDC document this week because it begins by talking about Sweden's unsuccessful experiment with drug legalization in 1965, but it leaves out the giant elephant in the room, which is Portugal's very successful with decriminalization, which is distinct. Mm -hmm. from legalization, the very successful experiment going on in Portugal right now um, with decriminalization. And the results there show that experimentation with drugs did go up, but addiction and substance use disorders in populations of special concern, like young people, prisoners, or already known addicts, went down. So it's a very successful experiment underway, and it's one that we should be taking more seriously, especially because the world is taking that experiment very seriously. And that's also hard drugs, by the way. Yeah. That's heroin yeah. we're talking about. Right, this, this isn't just a marijuana, marijuana. thing, but, but, but explain, I mean, sure. just for folks who are watching, the, the difference between legalization and decriminalization. Sure. Ten, ten years ago, Portugal decriminalized, meaning they took the criminal penalties out for possession of all drugs across the board Including up to heroin. a certain point, up to a certain point. But the hardest mm -hmm. drugs you can imagine, those are no longer illegal mm -hmm. in that country, all the way up to a certain point. This was a decade ago. Beyond that point, they think you have enough quantity, you're probably a dealer, we've got special laws for you. Mm -hmm. But for the mass of the population, those who in this country are overfilling our jails, mm -hmm. they said, we're going to stop arresting and putting these people away. And instead, what we're going to do is have a huge savings by dropping our criminal justice workload. And we'll take just a portion of that savings to institute one of the most robust treatments systems in the world. The mm. results have been AIDS rates went down, drug use rates among the young mm -hmm. went down, violence rates went down, and of course that criminal justice workload is such a huge savings for the country in hard economic times, you would think it would speak volumes in this yep. country, where I believe we need to move from prohibition, which is a failed idea, remember? We failed it at once before. <laughs> yeah, we, we had to repeal so, that amendment, yes. It's like right. trying to look like your high school right. yearbook picture, yep. it's a tragedy. So we don't go back, we now look ahead and we think yep. to ourselves, what would we do better? And the answer is, what did we do with alcohol? We mm. tax and Regulated. Yep. It's an imperfect system, but it is a controlled substance. A child cannot be sold it. Right. A grown-up has to use it responsibly. The government has an ongoing role. I don't like mm -hmm. legalization, frankly, mm -hmm. right. because I think it gives the government a kind of get-out-of-jail-free card. Mm -hmm. The government has botched this and destroyed communities for 40 yeah. years, yep. ruined the lives of people. It has a job to act as an actually responsible figure in a public health crisis, which is the crisis of addiction. He talked earlier right, so to, affir demand. to affirmatively engage. To be not, not, right, so to not just take your hands off of it, but right. to affirmatively engage. You break the, the point about money, I think that's useful. Let's, let's look at what the drug control strategy money, this 2013 drug control strategy money looks like. So this is from WhiteHouse.gov, and they say that the administration is doing its part to further the principles, both at home and abroad. Um, they've rebalanced the national drug control policy to reflect the complexity of drug use as both a public health and public safety issue. That's all great, but then look at this part. Dedicating more than $10.5 billion to prevention and treatment compared to 9.6 billion for domestic law enforcement. These are huge numbers. We talk about this sequester and this deficit all the time, but we're spending billions. Yeah, and treatment, that treatment number also means drug courts. Drug mm -hmm. courts aren't necessarily, here, let's make you feel better. It is, here, let's give you random drug tests for a really long time, mm -hmm. and if you don't show up for that random drug test, you're going to go to jail. Yep. So it's a, lot, it's a lot more harsh than it initially sounds. And you're right, it, we are spending this much money, we're committed to it. Joe Biden invented the, the concept of the drug czar. I mean, mm -hmm. we, have, we have this built-up kind of system here, and we need to, right now, say, okay, there are experiments happening in two states here, let's let them experiment mm -hmm. right now instead of continuing to enforce this. And it, it requires the same kind of courage as actually Joe Biden and mm -hmm. the president had on gay marriage yep. one year ago, right? They went out a little bit further than they were comfortable and going, and suddenly the world opened up for them and right. said, cool, 
It right? was kind of stunning, right? And, and, and I'm wondering, Judge, if one of the ways that this courage sometimes can happen is that you start getting cover from, from other folks. So part of how Don't Ask, Don't Tell, for example, occurs is that you end up with the general saying, actually, ending this policy would be good for the U.S. military. So I'm wondering, Judge, if there's a way in which, um, on the one hand, you've got Americans, 53 percent, saying that they would support the legalization of marijuana, but also if we need fraternal orders of police, if we need judges in the courts, to give cover in order to generate some courage for our public officials. Well, the problem is that most of the police chiefs in America are appointed by the very elected officials who don't want to talk about the problem because they have their eye on higher office. Mm -hmm. And the perception is, is that this is a black problem. Uh, the perception is that blacks are the violent ones. The perception mm -hmm. is that we've got to control these blacks in inner cities. And until until we deracialize this problem, we're not going to really make progress because there are going to be lots of white folks who are not affected by incarceration mm -hmm. who are going to be happy about the marijuana prohibition being ended. But that doesn't translate into mm -hmm. black folks uh, getting out of jail and having their problem treated as a medical one rather mm -hmm. than an incarceration one. And so the 800-pound gorilla in this room is race. Right, because there's this predisposition to already seeing black and brown bodies as criminal. And, and so so, and so, as violent. And as violent, right. And you see, the, the, the justification mm -hmm. that everyone uses in the black community for fighting this so-called war on drugs, which is really a war against black people and brown people mm -hmm. with drugs, is violence. Mm -hmm. And you see, violence comes from the difference in market strategy in the black community compared to the white community. Blacks sell drugs by the dose. That creates territorial fights because it has to be done on street corners, can't be done in stores. Mm -hmm. And so when you have competition, it's visible, it's notorious, mm -hmm. and the only response that's capable of making a dent in your competition is a violent response. Mm -hmm. And so here we have these very desperately poor people in the black community who can only go out and buy one bag at a time, mm -hmm. one pill at a time, who do it in the streets, and then that becomes the, the violent arena. There, and, they're, I answer that first? Uh, they are going to make me go, but okay. but but I really this I think this is a critically important issue. Um, you guys got to come back because okay. unfortunately I have to go to commercial, which I hate. I just I've got to stop with this commercial pain yeah. for the TV show situation. But thank you to Judge Murphy.